Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna go over something called river physics, which isn't really the name of a topic, but it's what I call it, because it's the physics that has to do with rivers. And so there's a few different questions we can potentially see with river physics. Let's talk about those right now. The first most basic question you can be given is you have a boat going down a river like this. Here's my boat and it's going that way with a speed of let's say five meters per second. Let's say that this boat is traveling upstream. In other words, the current from the water, let's say has a current of two meters per second. That's from the water itself. And let's say that this boat wants to ultimately travel a distance of 800 meters. And the question is, what is the time it would take to complete that journey? Well, here's what I would do. First thing is you have to calculate the resultant velocity of the boat. And all that means is you need to add vectors together. In this case, you have five meters per second going to the right and two meters per second to the left. So the resultant velocity is three meters per second to the right, because five minus two is three. And what that means is that since our boat is essentially going three meters per second to the right, then we can find the time using the standard relative motion equation, velocity equals distance over time. This is one of the most famous equations in all of physics, and you probably even use it before you get to physics. But you use this whenever you have a constant speed, like we have a constant speed right here. So the velocity that we're plugging in is three, the distance is 800, and the time is what we're solving for. So all I do is multiply both sides by t, 3t equals 800, and then I just have to divide both sides by three, and I'll plug this in a calculator to see what I get. Looks like I get 267, and that's seconds. If you wanted to convert that to minutes, then you would just divide by 60, and that would be 4.44 minutes, whichever answer you prefer. So whenever you have a boat going down the river or up the river, that's one of the easy examples. The much harder examples are when we have something like this. Let's take basically the same river as before, but this time our boat is going to be traveling across the river like this. We'll use the same speed as before, five meters per second, and we'll use the same current as before, which was two meters per second to the left. The question is, and I can ask a bunch of questions here, but the first question I'll ask is what is the total velocity of the boat. And the reason why I say total velocity is because I need to add these two vectors together. Now, I can't add them like five plus two equals seven because they don't point in the same direction. One points in the y direction, the other points in the x direction. So then how do I add these vectors together? Well, if you watch my other video on how to add vectors with components, you'll realize that what we need to do is make a right triangle. So that's what I'm gonna do. Here's my right triangle with five going up and two going to the left. And it's a right triangle, which means I can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, Pythagorean theorem, to find the total velocity. So that's just gonna be five squared plus two squared equals c squared. That's gonna be 25 plus four equals c squared. c squared equals 29. And then I just take the square root of 29. And it looks like my velocity is 5.4 meters per second. And that's my total velocity. Now, my next question is going to be, for the same problem, let's say this river is 20 meters wide. How long will it take to cross the river? So to answer that question, you do not want to use the 5.4 we just got in the last answer. Why not? Because that 5.4 is technically going that way, up and to the left, but really, I just want to use the five meters per second because that's the velocity that's gonna actually cross the river. In other words, I don't care about the two meters per second, the X component. I only care about the Y component because the 20 meters is a Y component. And now what equation am I gonna use? It's the same one as before. Velocity equals distance over time. This time the velocity will be five. The distance is 20 and we are solving for time. This is pretty easy. Just multiply both sides by T and then we'll divide by five. Looks like t is four seconds. It's gonna take four seconds to cross this river, which is pretty fast. Now, I have one more question, again, on this scenario. My last question will be, since the boat is not going straight across, 
really the boat is going at an angle like the blue line. My last question is going to be, what is the distance, D we'll call it, that you end up downstream because of that current? To find this, you have to realize that we're talking about the X component as opposed to the Y component. And the X component is that 2 meters per second. So we are going to use velocity equals distance over time again, but this time we're using the velocity 2 meters per second. So that's going to be V equals D over T. Velocity is 2. Distance is unknown. It's what we're solving for. And the time is the same time from the last part. It was 4 seconds. So to solve for D, just multiply 4 on both sides. D is going to be 8 meters. So you end up 8 meters downstream. Not desirable, for sure, but that's going to be the answer nonetheless. And now for the last example we have today. This is the most complicated example. And it's going to be when I angle my boat so that I try and account for the current in the river. So what I mean by that is same current as before, 2 meters per second. The boat is still going to be traveling 5 meters per second, but I'm going to be angling this boat at some angle theta so that my resultant velocity is heading straight across the river to the other side. And so the question is going to be, what is the angle that I need to steer this boat? So give yourself a minute, think about what you need to do to solve this, pause the video, and unpause it when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so here's the solution. The secret to this problem is you just need to add the two vectors together using, again, a right triangle. Now in this case it's interesting because this time the hypotenuse at the slant is 5 and the top is going to be 2. Now there's one of two things you can do right now. The first thing you can do is you can find the y component using Pythagorean theorem, but actually I don't care about that because the question's asking for the angle, which is right here. So if I want to solve for the angle, then I don't even need the y component. I just need to remember that sine of theta, and I'm choosing sine because sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Sine of theta is going to equal opposite 2 over hypotenuse 5. And then if I want to solve for theta, I just take the arc sine of both sides arc sine of two fifths. I plug this in my calculator and I got to make sure it's in degrees, not radians. And it looks like I get an angle of about 24 degrees. So that's how far I have to steer my boat to the right in order to go straight across. And now one last question for you. Let's say again, same as before, that's 20 meters across. How long will it take now to cross the river? Do you think it will be more or less than four seconds, which was our answer for the last one? Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can get the time it takes to cross the river. Okay, now you're unpausing it, you're looking at the solution. The secret to understanding this is you're not looking at the five meters per second. Since the 20 meters is the y component, I need the y component to find the correct velocity that we're going across. So what that means is I need to find the y component Easiest way to do that is Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. It's going to be 4 plus y squared equals 25. Subtract 4 from both sides. y squared equals 21. And they just have to take the square root of 21, which is going to be about 4.6. And there's my y component of velocity, 4.6 meters per second. Now I just need to plug that into the velocity equals distance over time equation where our velocity is the y component of velocity, 4.6. The distance is 20, and I'm solving for time. To do that, I just multiply both sides by t, and then I'm going to divide by 4.6. And when I do that, it looks like I get a final answer of about 4.4 seconds. So in other words, it took a little bit longer. And that's because there's a trade-off here. Yes, in this example, it's going to take longer to cross the river by about half a second, but the advantage is you're not ending up downstream. You're going to start here at the bottom and end here straight across. You didn't end up downstream at all. So there's a trade-off, just like everything in life. So hopefully that's starting to make more sense with these river physics problems. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.